Okay, in today's video, um, what I want to be showing is uh, there's a lot of talk about basically how to, if you can even possibly uh, connect a Kinetic 6000 through a 1203 USB and use it on drive tools. Um, you can actually do that. You can actually burn the firmware to a uh, Kinetic 6000 drive, uh, so a, a, a servo drive, and uh, you can do everything you, you possibly need to do, um, just like a PowerFlex drive or um, anything like that. You have the conductivity, you have the um, basically the the setup, and I, what I would like to show is, uh, I'm going to show it exactly, it's probably a two-stage video, um, I'm going to show it set up. Um, and and show you that it does work <clears throat> and then I'm going to in the next video I'll probably show you exactly what I did to make it work um, it's it's just a step a step by step process it's not nothing uh, special but if you do things wrong or your computer doesn't respond right you know there's a couple things you know it's always a little key details that we always miss so and I, I want to make sure I you know I give that that key key little details that that we can get so Anyway, um, I've already got everything set up. Um, <clears throat> if you see right here, I have my my adapter on already. So you just know that you're not going to see um, like a, a, a Kinetics um, icon or, or anything like that because you are using the DF1 driver, which again, I will come back in the next video and show you how to use it. I'll link that video below um, so that we'll have both of them together. Um, <clears throat> but what I'll do is uh, they just note that you're just going to see the AB uh, DPI, which is the 1203 USB. Um, so this is the what you know. I've heard a lot of people call it the Anaconda, which because it's, it's the way it's shaped is kind of like the like a snake's head or something. But um, anyway, it's just basically a serial, or not a serial. It's a, a USB to um, the converter and the converter has two different cables and the other cable <clears throat> would be the serial cable that goes and you plug it on the very top of the kinetics drive right by right between the um, where the fiber goes in <clears throat> so it's um you know it's right by the fiber connection so all the communications of this of the driver are the, the board of uh, the kinetics is basically in the same spot Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, <clears throat> we'll basically go ahead and go to drive and connect the drive. So I already already have drive executive open. So just to kind of let you know that. So I have it going to my, my now. Say for instance, it popped up and there was nothing here. You know, obviously you go down to your driver that you're using in RS Links and at that point you would click on the uh, ABDPI. When you click on the ABDPI, uh, basically it's going to make sure the connection goes. Um, at this point you should start seeing like flashing lights on your RX and TX, which is basically the transmit receive um, of the um, 1203 USB. So just make sure, you know, I mean, it, and if you don't, um, obviously something's not connected, but you wouldn't be at this stage if uh, something wasn't connected. So anyway, I just want to let you know some common things that you're going, going to see when you're doing this. And you can do this for a full rack. Um, <clears throat> in the instance that I'm using, I do only have one servo rack um, or servo controller drive, if you would. Um, you can't say, say, for instance, you had a, a rack of servos. You, you know you had the you had the power supply module um, <clears throat> you had several different other like servo drives <clears throat> excuse me you had several different other servo drives that attached to it you could you could actually upload every one of those drive parameters like everything about all those drives in one setting so you don't have to go to each drive and do that it will take a little bit longer you know say about I don't know, maybe depending upon, uh, you know, how many you have, but, you know, I've, I've been able to do like a rack of servos about, probably about 15 minutes, you know, <clears throat> but at that point you have every servo that you need. Um, 
you know, I've, I've also played around with, you know, flashing each one of them, but personally, I recommend flashing them one by one. So that's just me. Um, I won't kind of get into that. <clears throat> I, I would prefer when you're flashing that you, you, like I said, you can, and it is possible to use the 1203 USB. Um, in my opinion and the best practice of it things you should do your natural setup so probably do a, a uh, your Cercos drive or your Cercos um, communications or you know ethernet wise or some, something of that nature something a little bit faster than a, uh, a serial port <clears throat> So you see this does, um, as it is a serial port, it does, it's limited to the speed of it, right? Um, notice that it does show the, the firmware of the, the USB that I'm using. So you can actually update the firmware of the uh, 1203 USB. So a lot of, <clears throat> there's a lot of misconception around um as soon as you buy the the 1203 USB, that it, it is just a, you know, it's just a a, a converter that, that that you run. Well, it's a Rockwell converter, and like anything else, they they increase the drivers, or they may they may give you a different driver if they find a feature that they can improve on, <clears throat> which they have. So, <clears throat> <clears throat> so just note that um that is a possibility, you know. So if you have trouble and somehow you see a tech note that says, hey, you have to have this firmware for this, um, it's very rare, I will say that, um, but it does happen. So um, I'm not going to, you know, say that it doesn't. So, okay, so now <clears throat> we're, we should be almost done. So as you see, this does work, right? And I'm using dry tools, which... I've heard many different people say that you can't do this. Um, probably not. Um, there's probably it's a 50-50 playing field, but I've never seen nobody actually do it live. Um, besides, if you went to a Rockwell class, so uh, here it is live on YouTube. So cool. So <clears throat> real th real quick, right? You see, I am using the power. I do have this happens to be the power supply module, right? So it shows the power supply information, um, basically everything about it, you know, homing and stuff of that nature, uh, grouping, <clears throat> your IO, if you wanted to use IO. And note down here that it does show my scan port or, or my, um, my 1203 USB as well. So let's just say, for instance, I wanted to know about my 1203 USB. So what is my connection speed? What is my, basically, um, the full setup of, of what I have, right? <clears throat> um, the port, you know, you, as far as that goes, um, the reset, you could reset it, um, reset default, reset module, um, you can clear counts, you know, just to kind of see that things are communicating. Obviously, you see the, the DF1 packet sent and... Um, you, you see the, the kind of what's going on. So packets sent, packets received are, um, are right on top of each other. So you do know that uh, you are limited to the interface mode. You could put auto or you could put scan port. I leave it as auto. That's just um, her, you know, my setup. Just note that if you do make a change to it and for some reason it doesn't work, there are other ways to get it back running, but that is a different topic. Um, <clears throat> because you would obviously lose conductivity. So, um, so the next thing you know is, is you know, just understanding what your communication rate, which is serial port, right? Um, <clears throat> if you were scan port, you would be the max. I like to choose um, auto. That's just me. Um, so I like to keep things simple. So just like any drive tools or drive that you connect to with drive executive um, you have your groupings in case you want to like look at something specific you know which group it's in uh, say for instance you just happen to be an expert on whatever you're looking at you just want to look for that matter if uh, a lot of us are just going to go straight to the parameter list and anything in blue you cannot change um, 
you know, so just know that. Um, the firmware version, <clears throat> you know, you, you can see, you know, show your, what kind of data you, you're running. Um, I'm not going to really kind of go through the parameters of this because that's, that's a, probably a whole other video um, of a servo drive. But just know that this is, uh, again, this is the, uh, <clears throat> this is a, uh, a, uh, a 2094, uh, D servo. So it is a Kinetic 6000 and it is a, uh, a 24, our, uh, 2094, uh, BC01, uh, dash, uh, M01. So, See, I might be able to pull that up on the. So you can um you can show alarms and stuff of that nature too. So. So you see, I had a bunch of alarms. You can clear your faults and stuff of that nature. Reset drive. Um, clear the queue. Which I don't know if it'll clear it yet. No faults. Trips. Um, let's see. <coughs> I think it's properties yeah access level yeah so um yeah just know there's some other stuff we can do you can change your access level you know as far as that goes um <clears throat> see so now you get just different stuff right so there's some other stuff that opens up um and i'll i'll come back and talk about that but you get a whole different like whole different level of parameters you can do um, so just know that uh, you can kind of look at what's going on um, this is a lot of a uh, lot of the cool information that in you know, a lot you, know, you just don't see um, so just know that too that a, um, a servo when you flash it um, the natural process of that servo working is just like a computer it has the boot code which allows it to boot up um, application code. I mean, the servo works are like flashing it uh, works in several different manners. Um, what I mean by that is like you have like this firmware for this, this firmware does that, this firmware does this in the firmware package is what we download from the Rockwell website and uh, burn our firmware off of. So when we burn a firmware, we're burning a firmware for, you know, this component, that component, this component, and it's all this one package, and we call it, you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> in this instance, we, you know, I may come back and flash this firmware um, to a higher version, and I probably will um, using this. Uh, I'll show you, you know, you can just flash firmware, and you can go in here, and you can pick whatever, but that's uh, for a different video. What I will do is, uh, I, like I said, I just wanted to show this connected, show uh, everything working. Obviously, this is node one. Um, that's just based upon my setup. Um, again, uh, I just wanted to eliminate the question of can you use uh, drive tools, which is made for PowerFlex drives and, and that stuff, you know, stuff like that, with a uh, Kinetics 6000 drive, servo drive. Yes, you can. You can do just about anything you want with it. <clears throat> with that said, I can actually save as and save this as the DNO file. I can change the name of it to uh, like Kinetics uh, 6000. <clears throat> upload and just uh, basically save it so now I have the DNO file right which ju is just like the having a DNO file for a PowerFlex drive so you obviously know when you you like if you had a PowerFlex drive running in the sit in like a fit in the field and it failed that you would need that setup right so you go get a, another PowerFlex drive that's basically out of box it's default you have to plug into it um, wherever, whatever communication you decide to use and download the DNO file. So real quick, we can go see that I now have the DNO file. <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure where it went. Where did that go? Let's do that one more time. 
uh, uh, save. <clears throat> I'm trying to think where I put it. <clears throat> Not sure where it went. Um, oh, there it is. I'm sorry. So, okay. Mouse is not working here. All right. So just know that this is the same drive. So now I'm online with one and I'm offline with the other. So if I close one of them out, see. So um, this is the same drive. So you now you have a backup of your servo rack, which is unheard of, which a lot of people don't have. They don't even know they can do. So, um, <clears throat> you know, you, you have your... Um, you have your setup and this is very friendly for other things too like demo mode if you want to run a servo off of uh, 110 which a lot of people think you can't do either yes you can so and if you want to change it from demo to back to really quick you know from demo mode to um, back to running on, on a machine for 40 or, or 230 then you can do that too just simply download you could have one for demo mode and one for you know uh, out of box or something anyway so <clears throat> i'll wrap this video up and uh come back and show you how i set this up from scratch um you know from the usb 1203 to the um <clears throat> the driver and everything okay so uh hopefully that was helpful and um we'll see you on the next video and they should be linked below so if you get curious and want to see the other videos on how to set it up because that is the most confusing part for some people uh conductivity is the key right so if you can't get to it you can't do nothing with it so if you want to see that it'll be linked below and um again thank you for your time hopefully everything uh you know going well and uh these videos are helping out all right thank you